Hello everyone, welcome to another classic Friday new product post here at Sparkfun Electronics. We've got a few really big products this week, so let's see what's in store. This week, we're very proud to announce the FreeSock 2. The FreeSock 2 is a very powerful development board. As you can see, the FreeSock 2 maintains the Arduino footprint, so you can use the shields that you're accustomed to using on your Arduino compatible boards with the FreeSock. There is firmware on the FreeSock that allows you to essentially map the pins to be that of the Arduino. When I say map pins, the FreeSock works a little differently than what you might be accustomed to with something like an Arduino compatible board. If we look at the Arduino board, you can see that we have an analog in, we have digital, the little squiggly line denotes the PWMs. These are all pretty fixed inside the chip, the Atmega328, they are hardware defined, meaning that the UART pins, the digital pins, the PWM, the I2C, the analog, they're pretty much defined as that by the hardware. So this, the 328, has a single UART channel. Now you can use something like soft serial to emulate a second serial port, but it is really just that is an emulation of that. This is where something like the FreeSock 2 is very powerful all of these pins can be essentially remapped to be whatever you want. There are some basic hardware limitations in this board. Um, for instance, you only have so many ADCs, you only have so many um, op amps, things like that. But generally speaking, if you want to have all of these be digital pins, you can do that. With the software, you can go in and say, I want this pin to be a digital, I want this to be a UART, or I want to drag over a PWM and your options are really pretty unlimited. They're only really limited by the amount of processing power that is on this board. Now, processing power. The Arduino is a 16 megahertz board, whereas the PSOC 2 is an 80 megahertz. So you run at a much faster clock frequency, and also there's more RAM, and the FreeSock 2 is just overall more powerful. The other interesting thing about the FreeSock 2 is it also has a lot of extra hardware on this that the Arduino just doesn't have. If you've ever used an Arduino before and you've tried to do an analog signal out of it, an Arduino is very good to try and read an analog signal, but if you've ever tried to write a true analog signal, not a PWM, it's actually really difficult. It's actually impossible to get a true analog signal out. Um, with the PSOC, not only can you read in an analog signal using the ADC, the analog to digital converter, but it also has internal DACs that you can actually output a true analog signal. If you've ever tried to use a sensor with an Arduino or other platform and it requires an op amp to boost that signal, you usually have to add a second piece of hardware to do that. With the FreeSock, you can actually configure an input to have an op amp associated with it, and so you can do that in the hardware itself, in the actual development platform. So that's pretty cool. The other main feature that the FreeSock 2 has is a hardware debugger. It allows you to actually run through the code line by line so you can debug your code. With Arduino, it just runs, and you might have to put in your own brakes or things like that. But this has a hardware debugger, which is the secondary USB there. And you can actually hook that up and see the code line by line, see what the variables are, and actually stop the code, run the code, things like that. So pretty much in all aspects, this is a much more powerful board. Is it harder to use? Currently, there is software for the FreeSock 2, which is the creator. That is essentially the IDE that goes along with the FreeSock 2. Unfortunately, this only runs on Windows, so that is a limiting factor. However, we are working on a bootloader that can be loaded onto the FreeSock 2, which allows this to run on the Arduino IDE with some limitations, but you still need Windows to load that bootloader. Um, we're getting around to that, but a lot of changes will be made. So currently, right now, keep that in mind. You do need a Windows machine to properly utilize the FreeSock 2. Uh, we do have a nice hookup tutorial that shows you how to use this board, so you might want to check that out just to see what some of the limitations are and what Creator can do versus what you can do in the IDE. But at the end of the day, it's an extremely powerful board that takes away a lot of the limitations that a lot of people see with something like the Arduino or similar development platforms where you have a fixed number of that one pin that you really want to use. I know personally I've run into the single UART issue a lot, and going to the Mega doesn't always solve that by giving you four UARTs. Maybe you want something a little bit different. So definitely check out the FreeSock 2. In the upcoming weeks and months, we will have a lot of different demos and tutorials centered around this board. Just in time for Maker Fair, we have a very interesting and special new product. This is a special edition version of the Teensy 3.1. 
we've been carrying the Teensy 3.1 for a while now, and the Teensy line has a huge following behind it. This is a special edition version of the 3.1. It is a pink version, and this is the special Anouk version. You might be familiar with that name. She is a Dutch fashion designer who has been all over the internet. She's very famous and has had a lot of really cool like 3D printed dresses and she tends to incorporate electronics in with fashion. So you see a lot of microcontrollers and things like that and um, all of that integrated into her work. This is a special pink edition that Teensy has created specially for her. The reason it's pink is to bring awareness to women in the engineering field. And also, Anouk will be here at AVC. She will be here doing a special demonstration for AVC, so be sure to go ahead and check that out. We only have a limited supply of these. These are a one-time run. The stock you see is the only stock there will ever be, and as far as we know, we're the only ones carrying it, so get yours today. Before we get to the last product, I just wanted to make mention of a couple other products that we had sneak in this week. We had a couple posts earlier this week, Wednesday and Thursday, about the Spark Photon. Spark has actually changed their name to Particle, so now it's the Particle Photon. If you're not familiar with the Photon, it is a really fantastic Wi-Fi module that makes IoT really easy to use. And we have a full ecosystem of products ready for pre-order, so go ahead and check out the post from yesterday to see the Particle Photon line of products. What is this little guy? Last week we had the MG2639 Cellular Shield, and this is a demo for that. A cell shield is really useful if you don't have access to any other wireless protocols. So, you know, outside you might not have access to a Wi-Fi signal, but you might have access to a cell tower. So if you're doing a remote application that, you know, isn't around a building or isn't around a Wi-Fi access point, you can use a cell shield instead. So inside here, We've got the shield attached to a red board, and you can see that it uses a traditional SIM card, just like what would be in your phone. And then this right here is the actual cell module. And then we have the antenna, just kind of routed out through the back of it. And these are the SIM cards that we sell. They're the T-Mobile prepaid card that's um, you know six months of unlimited data for 70 bucks or whatever. Um, so these work directly with this. And we also have a little battery backup there. These shields are really cool because you can have it text message, you can have it um, place calls, you can have it do it pretty much everything that a normal phone would do. So you can actually have it text your data back to you, which is eh, pretty cool. Um, so Sean's got a little demo prepared for this, so let's see what that looks like. I made a button, and this button is attached to our new MG2639 cellular shield. When the Arduino boots up, it configures the cellular shield, which contains one of our prepaid SIM cards, to attach to the local cellular network. It listens for this button to be pushed, and once the button is pushed, it sends out a text to everyone on a list inside of the Arduino. And you can use this to send for help, call all your friends together, whatever it might be. The cellular shield also contains the ability to do voice and data, which means you can use it to get an internet connection even if there's no local Wi-Fi. The MG2639 does contain a built-in GPS, so I could use it to send my coordinates if I'm pushing the button to call for help. For this project, though, I'm just sending a text to our support team if I need help with something. Oh no, it looks like people are having trouble installing the new version of Arduino. I can't do this alone. Spark Fun Support, this is Chris. What seems to be your emergency? 